Hey guys, welcome to Lovecast, the boys love podcast where we talk about everything related to boys love. I'm your host Pixie and with me are my co-hosts Alexa and Coco. Hi Hi guys. guys. Our guest today is Avenue X. She is one of the go-to people for those who don't know how much about Chinese culture or the language as she talks about Chinese dramas on her YouTube channel. Welcome. Hello. Welcome. (laughs) So I was thinking as a way to start off, if you could like just do a short introduction of yourself. Okay. So this is Avenue X. It is my channel name, and it's also how I refer to myself (laughs) on the internet. I've been running a YouTube channel reviewing Chinese dramas for, actually right now, slightly over four years now. Um, Although the earlier videos, you wouldn't be able to find them anymore. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, but all in all, yeah, a little bit more than four years. And yeah, that's, that's what I do. And on YouTube and... My focus is on YouTube, but I also mm-hmm. have some other accounts on like like the Chinese platforms, oh, Billy cool. Billy, under the same name. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So how did you end up talking about Chinese dramas on YouTube? <laughs> what made you like jump into that? <laughs> yeah, it's just something that I wanted to do. Uh, I think about four years ago, I was working in a company and I feel like everything I do is for other people, which is like... Mm-hmm. It's a designer design company and everything mm-hmm. I do is for my clients. So I never really have anything that's done for myself. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, it gives you the money, right? But then yeah. you feel like I've put so much work and mm. effort into designing things and thinking, but it never belongs to you. Like, yeah, it's just, and obviously you have to entertain client, which is, mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like version one, version 1.2, version 1.4, version 5.7, and Mm. revert back to version 1.2. Yeah. So that kind of life is a bit (laughs) quite frustrating. Yeah, I can imagine it's not very fulfilling. (laughs) So that's the reason why I started a channel and I was thinking what I should be doing, really. Mm -hmm. I just couldn't figure out. So I tested a few things and then Eventually, I settled down on talking about dramas, and mm-hmm. and it's been it's been since like, it's pretty crazy because I can clearly remember when I first started, I was like, I'm about to make five videos, and that's it. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't have anything else to talk about. Yeah, yeah. the channel is gonna die. Like, I have no idea what's gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and by it. now, I think I have over four hundred. But then, oh my I'm not sure if they're all on YouTube because some of them are taken down. Some of oh. them are on other platforms. So, all in all, mm-hmm. you know, it it's been going for four years. So, uh, <laughs> I totally yeah. didn't see that. I have to tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> not not right from the beginning. Yeah, I see that. That's really hard to imagine. Like the size of it. Like you have how many subscribers do you have right now? I think a bit over 60,000. Yeah. Wow. So it's not like, yeah, it's steady, but like, like it's not in any way so impressive in terms of <clears throat> being a YouTube channel that's been running consistently for four years. So like, I only started to update probably really, really intensely and regularly at the, since end of 19. Mm-hmm. Before that, I was much more casual. Right. So still though like i mean it depends on what you compare it to mm, there are yeah. channels that just blow up overnight right so right yeah compared to the entire youtube landscape it's just my channel is as small as being irrelevant <laughs> but <laughs> but it really has been quite an intensive journey for four years now so did you notice like any change in your viewership with COVID and more people being home and probably looking into dramas and stuff to pass the time? I wouldn't say statistically, right? That makes a huge difference to mm-hmm. me because mm-hmm. my channel started in 17 and there was a really popular drama and mm. the, the Eternal Love or the three, 10 Miles of Peach Blossoms, mm, however yes. you translate that. And that mm. got me the first round of viewers. I think I got like over 10,000 really quickly. Oh, wow. And then oh. it starts to grow really, really slow and steadily. And it only mm. starts to pick up speed. It did pick up speed last year, but I don't think it's necessarily anything to do with COVID. It probably mm-hmm. just just happens 
coincidentally at the same yeah. time. Yeah. yeah, and I I think like the last couple of years there's been like this rise of like Asian culture in general mm. being more main in Western countries. More people are interested in what's out there, and they're sort of drawn to all these cultures around Asia that's and what they have to offer. Yeah, mm. I know that's how I ended up with it. <laughs> Particularly stuff from South Korea. Yeah. yeah. The Hallyu Definitely. wave is major right now, and I mm -hmm. think that's kind of bled off into some other. Because I know I was the, kind of the same way. I got into the game with K-pop and K dramas first, and then, you know, I branched off into Thai BL, which is you know how I got here. And I mm -hmm. do dabble in some Chinese dramas here and there. So you know, it's kind of like you dip your feet in and. You end up with like a whole it's almost like it opens a whole nother door that i feel like mm -hmm. a lot of western media viewers aren't open to before they experience mm -hmm. something that makes them interested in it yeah and I, I see that with my friends my friends refuse to watch anything that isn't in english or norwegian so i just i look at them and i'm ju i just feel sorry for them honestly yeah. i feel sorry that they don't allow themselves to try these wonderful new languages and cultures and just shows because there's so much good stuff out there i agree i was wondering when did you like discover boys love well this thing has always been there like it's actually quite prominent for say my generation growing mm -hmm. up at a certain age i think the earliest version of that is all web novels before yeah. anything was made into anything so early 2000s already it is mm -hmm. a it was a thing that started on internet i mm -hmm. wasn't never really into web novel even till today because i just don't like read unedited stuff <laughs> that, yeah. that is like filled with grammatic mistakes anyway. <laughs> it's true. and super long right because they yeah. want to make it as long as possible to to get the money and clicks but yeah. some friends, like I, I've had friends, very close friends from high school back then, like very beginning of the novel, web novel world, they were mm -hmm. already very deep in it. Yeah. So because of them, I know the mm -hmm. genre exists and there are a lot of well-known works that I've heard names about. So mm -hmm. BL has always been something that I know, but I never was into it in any way mm. and because i was doing drama reviews and certain dramas get certain mm -hmm. bl dramas get made so that's mm -hmm. how i have contact with it and for a couple of really successful ones and that i really love i usually watch the drama first and then then go check out the original mm. novel yeah right that's it. i don't go out and search for bl novels voluntarily yeah um, yeah yeah so one thing that's really confusing to um westerners like for china's approach to bls in general is like the censorship do you know like could you explain the censorship how it works in china well i can tell you like the basics but in terms of mm -hmm. exactly what are the rules that's mm -hmm. a black box yeah. and that's how it's done yeah so the rules is um, for Chinese dramas and also radio plays and whatever, there are like films. So films go to a different censoring body mm -hmm. now because they divided that quite a few years ago now. So for all the television series or variety shows, whatever, they all have to go through what we call the organization called Guang Dian, which means National Television and Radio Administration. I think mm -hmm. that's the translation. And this organization would censor the stuff, right? And then mm -hmm. give you a go or not go. And then for dramas, current way of working is if you want to make a project, you first need to have a script and then you submit it with a, mm -hmm. you submit the uh, outline and yeah. what company is doing it, what type of is a contemporary, is a period, what is the synopsis, very simple and what like how long it's going to be how many episodes and all those basic information to this organization and they will give you first a go ahead or not go ahead right so if they allow you to go ahead then you go and make it once you've finished making it you have to then give them what you've done 
and then、mm-hmm. they have to look at it and see what needs to be changed or whether it can go through. I think it was from last year they、mm-hmm. they designed a new rule, which is when you first go file for the license to go ahead and making it, you actually have to have the full script ready. Previously,、Ooh. you only needed、mm. a outline. Mm. But now you have to have the whole thing, and they don't、mm. check every project, but they would, like, just randomly draw. So、okay. for pool of submission for filing for the license,、mm. supposedly you should all have your script, and they would just、right. pick, you know, randomly from those projects. If they pick you and you don't have one, then you're screwed. Wow! <laughs> and they're trying to use that to control the quality because、mm-hmm. Chinese dramas have been really, really. <laughs> Let's say declining, okay, in the last five years, in terms of script quality. So、mm-hmm. that's what they've been doing. They have also been not making hard rules, but very clear suggestions, which is make it shorter. So、yeah. make it under forty episodes, ideally.、Mm-hmm. Okay, so if you、mm-hmm. want to go over, you have to have a good reason to do that. But it's not a hard rule, and so so you kind of have to go through two two. A、censoring things. One is the first step and second step, and also I think there's a slight difference between the drama that will go on satellite television, so、mm-hmm. that would actually get aired into te- people's television sets, yeah, from say Hunan Television or from whatever provincial television, and there's a different set of rules for that than for the drama that that only goes on web. Yeah. yeah Now they've、sense. said they're gonna make the rule exact, but I think the censoring is still not exactly the same. So it will、mm-hmm. be tighter and stricter for sure. If it has to go into go on satellite television,、mm. so that's the basic process of dramas getting censored by the national、uh, television and radio、yeah. administration. But there's an exclusion: is if it's a television series that's made by CCTV,、mm-hmm. so China Central,、mm-hmm. the yeah the state owned sort of biggest television right station. If it's made by itself, then the NRTA doesn't. Have the right to censor it. Oh,、huh. yeah, because they are they these two organizations, CCTV and NTA, are on the same level. Oh, governmentally well, speaking, like, so so they don't、yeah. have right to censor each other. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that is CCTV's drama d- does not need Guangdian. It's not, and everyone else's need.、Hmm. So that's interesting. That's what it is, yeah. Huh. So. Everyone who knows about Chinese boys' love know that we like usually we just call it a bromance because obviously because of that censorship you don't get what you get in normal or other like Thai BLs、mm-hmm. because they don't they're not allowed to what like show some、mm-hmm. well they're they're not allowed to show gay relationships right like where's the where's the where's the line. So there's no clear line, like like I said, all the censoring rules for dramas are、mm. not written down, and、mm-hmm. that's how it's done. And for China, it's been like, and policies change from、mm-hmm, year to、mm-hmm. year. So, so they kind of try to control. For example, if everybody go and make court dramas, harem dramas with women fighting, then they kind、mm. of control that genre and say, don't all go and make that. So、yeah. there's always policy shift about what goes through, what doesn't, but. There's never clear rule. Like there's no written down version that you can just say, okay, I don't do this, I don't do this, I don't do this. Then I'm good. No,、mm. like it doesn't work like that. I'd say generally speaking, for BL adaptation,、mm-hmm. the normal sort of little bit flirting thing should all be fine. It just、mm-hmm. probably cannot first, obviously, because whether it's BL or you know BG,、mm. the dramas have you know like, and China doesn't have like like that rate different rating like different age restriction、mm. system. So you. Basically, cannot do stuff that just cannot show up, right,、mm, on right. television. So、mm-hmm. that definitely, whether it's BG or BL, that cannot happen. And then、mm. for BLs, the rumor is you cannot show in very direct, plain way that two guys ended up happily ever after.、Uh, mm. yeah. You know, like they're married, they they have a family,、mm-hmm. and everything、right. is perfect. Like you can't really have that kind of ending. You、yeah. can have a suggestive、right. open ending, like as long as you don't go like in your face, right? Okay, yeah. Because it's the two guys like living forever happily ever after,、yeah. then it's okay. And then、yeah. there are other rules about other things that's not、mm-hmm. related to BL that would also affect certain, you know, like 
what kind of ending, what kind of thing can happen to what kind of character. <laughs> wow.、Mm. That's really strict. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's and and it's never written down. So it's、yeah. it's all in the rumor and in the people's guessing. But you look at、right. what works. What are the works that actually aired and got through and then ended、mm-hmm. up still being there? Then you kind of interpret, right? Right.、Mm-hmm. You you kind of figure out what are the restrictions and how far you can push it. Yeah. Yeah. Because a lot of people have been really surprised that Word of Honor got away with as much as they got away with.、Mm-hmm. But. Do you think, like, if Word of Honor gets really big, is there like a chance that the government will go in and take it down? Well, so far it hasn't happened. For future, if it happens, it mostly would not happen because they voluntarily go and take it down. It would be actually、mm. certain people go report it,、uh, and、yeah. then if the voice of that whatever gets too loud. Mm-hmm. That, that could happen if nobody wants to make it. Like if nobody intentionally try to sabotage it, I don't see like it's necessary、mm. to take it down because it really hasn't re- like you can say pushing it, but because the version that you see officially right、mm. doesn't have anything that's super pushing it, and because、mm-hmm. they dub the lines, they they do the ending in the Easter egg, all that.、Mm. So like、mm-hmm. supposedly on the surface, right, it's okay. Yeah. So I don't see why, and for censor. Ship, they wouldn't voluntarily go in, because they've already censored it once. Right.、Yeah. It w- would only be if there's a huge wave of a complaint、right. coming、that、from somewhere that they would go back and look at it. Yeah.、Mm. Mm-hmm. So it's like up to like the general public and their response to the show. Yeah, and also I think、mm. there's for censoring stuff, right? Because because there are so many dramas. Mm-hmm. And so it couldn't be just one group of people censoring it. So they would actually divide.、Mm-hmm. And for certain projects that have a lower rating, for example, with Word of Honor, it's an A project in Youku's own their own. They would categorize their projects as S level, S plus level, A level. You know,、mm-hmm. at different、yeah. level.、Mm-hmm. So A is actually not a big production level, like not the top projects. So for those like lesser. And things that definitely don't go on satellite television anyway. The censoring sort of people who would be responsible for censoring these type of things, right, tend to have like not so that many strict rules.、Mm, so, so it's the、sense. type of drama because it doesn't go on satellite, it probably doesn't get censored that much.、Mm. Yeah, and and then in terms of like what the, the detailed rules, nobody knows. Yeah, unless you work for Gondian, then probably you know. <laughs> <laughs> But you'll never <laughs> tell that in public, right? Yeah, right. This is a big power play, right? Because、mm-hmm. what I let you know, what I don't let you know, and you have to guess from what I say. All that it plays into、mm. this whole thing, and it's kind of like、mm-hmm. China's tradition anyway, for the thousands of years of. <laughs> yeah, you you notice how they talk in these dramas、mm-hmm. and stuff. It's very indirect.、Mm-hmm. And like as Westerners, you're used to like, especially in Norway, we are very direct with how we th- say things. There is no poetic language. <laughs> you know what's up when we yeah, say it. Yeah, but the good thing about right, like I'd say the good thing about that is with a long history and a lot of literature reference、mm. and stuff, and then the tradition of Chinese people talking between lines.、Mm. Yeah, I mean we can literally like in China have a conversation about. An hour and not saying anything directly, but everybody knows、mm. what you mean. What you're、yeah. talking about. So it's like a tradition that's just like everybody knows it.、Mm. So there is a good thing about that is you have a lot of space to work with, right?、Yeah. You can play with it. You can play、mm. the the sub level, yeah, <laughs> under yeah. surface yeah. and and like one level under, two levels under, multiple levels,、mm. and it's、mm-hmm. all just stack on top. And it depends on the reader and the The、right. audience, um, how far you can figure out what's being hidden there. Like sometimes it's definitely over interpretation for sure, but sometimes、yeah. it's, it's also like they've put so much stuff in that, and it totally depends on if you know what they're referring to. Right.、Mm-hmm. So it's a fun game too. It just makes, which is like Word of Honor is really special. Which is it's something that you can go back and rewatch.、Mm-hmm. Like for me, usually、mm-hmm. a drama I watch it once and then it's gone. Yeah, but for this one, like it's really funny. You go back and watch, and you realize, okay, I didn't catch that one li- earlier, and they're actually doing that. So it's、yeah. it's fun. Do you think it adds like a cool 
level for people to be able to read between the lines. Like you said, it, it makes it kind of fun to be able to look at certain interactions or certain dialogues and interpret what you think that means. And then also like theorize with other people about what they think it means and see what other people pulled from it. And like you said, go back and rewatch things and see what else you can find. So I think it does have like a really cool level for viewers. And I can see why they would enjoy like going through and, and seeing what they can pull out of the dialogue and the interactions. Yeah, I think it's almost like like an Easter hunt. Yeah, for stuff and people love that. And I I've been watching some of your videos, Avenue, mm -hmm. like from Word of Honor and stuff, where you talk about like the references to like poetry and stuff like that. It's it's very interesting and it's it gives like a different dimension to the yeah. show that you kind of wouldn't catch otherwise. Mm -hmm. Which is also why I think like channels like yours is really important for us who don't understand Chinese and Chinese culture and history. And it just makes everything a lot more enjoyable. Yeah, I think on China's internet, particularly for the BL audience, right? Mostly just girls and who love, like it's pretty much the same group of people. Because mm -hmm. 2018, Guardian was popular. 19, mm -hmm. Untamed was popular. Now it's mm -hmm. World of Honor. And pretty much it's the same group of people who are doing like getting crazy mm. over it because yeah. i follow the people that i got to know those years back and then mm -hmm. now it's still that same group of people getting crazy yeah. over this drama so it's definitely like a really <laughs> specific demographics mm -hmm. but but like among this big audience ship of people we would love to say it's much more engaging and interesting for us to go and dig the sugar out Mm -hmm. right. Then the drama feeding us sugar. So yeah. we actually don't want you to be super direct in your face mm -hmm. through all that. And it feels what we call, we call it gong ye tang jing, okay. which is industrial sweetener. Uh, <laughs> so we don't want industrial <laughs> sweetener. We want to go yeah. and actually dig Light sugar. Sweetness. Yeah. <laughs> dig mm -hmm. sugar out of broken glasses, right? They're the, yeah. <laughs> like the way we talk about it. Yeah, is to figure out where the sugar is hidden among all the broken glasses. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's really no, cool. That's, actually. that's really, yeah. really cool. Yeah, I think like you see that more and more in other like in Thai BLs too. There are some of the shows right now. Some are like the generic kind that are feeding you the information, but there are some that you can like sit down and discuss about, find new. Easter eggs on yeah what's ha actually happening it makes you think makes like it creates a discussion and that's really interesting it adds a new layer to it especially like when you've been watching certain like genre drama for so long you know you kind of get used to certain things and it can kind of take the excitement out of it at times but when you have instances like this where you kind of have to go in and and pull the things out it feels gratifying and it makes it fun to watch and discuss and and it kind of renews that excitement for for the shows that you're watching mm -hmm. i'm a little curious how much do you know like about like the chinese fan base for boys love like is it big in china like more of the obvious fans or and is if it is like moving outside like the female fan base and reaching other people mm. as well i don't quite like because i don't have i don't have access to actual data <laughs> you know like mm. how many people are right yeah of course this, like ew, no way of figuring that out mm, yeah. I, i say still majority is female right mm -hmm. Because BL in itself is a female perspective of this mm -hmm. that really mm -hmm. doesn't have much to do with reality. Yeah. But it's the form of fantasy that female, often female writers and creators mm -hmm. create and then female consumers. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it does touch, like, there are guys who also watch these things and love, love but mm -hmm. in comparison, number-wise, yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's not on the same <laughs> level for sure. But certain, the funny thing about Word of Honor is um, when the drama got really popular and even till mm -hmm. now, the reaction videos on Chinese video platforms, the mm -hmm. most popular ones are all made by guys. Oh, like the, the ones that have highest 
view counts、mm-hmm. are the ones that are made by male drama、That's、watchers. Interesting. And often they would title that in their video as "Straight Men Watch <laughs> BL <laughs> Dramas BL. and How We React." <laughs> <laughs> and like immediately, that will attract a lot of people's <laughs> click, just because、yeah. they want to see how straight guys interpret the、yeah. BL content. So、mm-hmm. in itself, it's really funny, like in that way. And there are definitely guys who just like, and there there are a couple accounts I can remember that are so funny.、Mm-hmm. It's like this guy from episode like at the beginning. He was just、mm-hmm. like, I want to take a look at what it looks like. So he updates as the drama airs in China,、mm-hmm. and from the early on, the way he talks to like by the end of it, like、mm-hmm. everybody、uh, in live comment, which is on Billy Billy,、mm-hmm. that doesn't exist on YouTube. I wonder why. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> for that function to happen, you see the live comments of people are so enjoy like having fun with his change,、mm-hmm. yeah. how he changed his perspective and how. Like from the beginning, how he would talk, like even the tonal quality of the voice is、mm-hmm. different、oh. from later, and、yeah. it's just like so interesting. And right now, there、mm-hmm. is a group of landscaping, so landscape architects. I think they all、mm-hmm. work for company, and they're all straight guys,、mm-hmm. and they've been updating reaction like the entirety of the episode. So they、oh, wow. would watch the entirety of the episode, not cutting anything.、Mm-hmm. And four or four or five of them sitting at a table, probably in their company, whatever. And、That's、they've been、so、updating that daily, and it starts <laughs> to get so much traction. It's insane. <laughs> it's the most popular reaction video on Billy Billy that they actually <laughs> went ahead and get like special permission from Youku to allow、wow. them to actually upload entire episode reactions, but they、oh, have、wow. to cut it into pieces, and then. They actually update their reaction daily at 6 p.m., which is when、oh、the drama was aired. It was 6 p.m. in China,、uh, so now they are、so、updating、cool. their reaction every day at 6 p.m. Oh wow! <laughs> and 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 like everybody is screaming like, oh! So the drama fans are watching their reaction as、uh-huh. if they're watching the drama again on、yeah. a daily basis. <laughs> and this hasn't happened before. Yeah. And these four guys have 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 gotten their fa- like they've had like nicknames <laughs> and they're famous now just as reaction people because these four guys kind of like I think they're in their thirties forties you know and yeah yeah so so and the, the way they watch the drama and how they read it really is from first beginning they look like they watch it as a wuxia mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. as a like, traditional sort of the Chinese. Martial art world yeah. story, yeah. and yeah. then they get to a certain point at the beginning. They don't quite get it. You know, there are things that they don't get, which every、mm-hmm. drama watcher actually knows, and they would be laughing in the live comments. It's like, ah, this、right. guy totally didn't experience right. that for the first time. <laughs> yeah, and then later, as you see into the teens, so now they're by episode fifteen, I think,、mm-hmm. and you see how they change too,、yeah. from their <laughs> first like episode reaction to. Like now, by episode fifteen, they all get it, and、yeah. it's so funny to watch how they, them reaction. So, like this whole thing is also quite unusual. I think it,、mm. and it didn't happen for the Untamed. Definitely didn't happen、mm. for Guardian、mm. back in twenty eighteen. But for Word of Honor twenty twenty one, this is the new thing. Is like the reaction itself is something that people are like. <laughs> getting that's, crazy. That's、over. very interesting because Word of Honor is also like one of the more like. I remember the first like when I started watching it, I was just like, okay, this is definitely not a bromance. They they are flirting <laughs> <laughs> in wide open. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone was going crazy about it because it was like it was such an outlier. Like it doesn't really happen in like the Untamed, and the Guardian, and stuff. Yeah, but you yeah. could also say because it has something to do with the character setup. It's、mm. just because the character is written as this particular type of person, and because the things the character wants to do、mm-hmm. just happens to be so, therefore he acts like that, right? Right、mm-hmm. from the episode one. Which, if the story is not like that, if the character setup is not like that, if their MO is not like that, then it wouldn't happen. Yeah. So it makes sense for the story's logic for it to happen,、mm. and it just happens to be. Because right at the beginning, if you in the beginning, if you don't read the original novel, you kind of don't quite get why, for example, Wang Keqing would acting would be acting like that.、Mm-hmm. 
if you know, like it makes sense. If you know the later plot, it also makes sense. It just happens to be, as a character, whether you know BL or not BL, it is reasonable for him to act like that way. And then at the same time, he acts like that way that you can interpret as a BL.、Mm-hmm. So I think this is like this is just what the story is, which doesn't quite work for the other stories that got、right. really popular previously. Yeah, I get that. Do you think like this is like opening people's minds a little bit in China, like men and stuff about? I don't think like this is necessarily like a huge thing. I think it's popular within a very limited circle,、mm-hmm. and it hasn't broken through anything. Like, because China, the thing about China is it's too big and too many people, so、yeah. nothing can really break through、right. these、mm. days. Because because of how Content is consumed now, compared to say twenty years ago, when pretty much it's still on television. So it's still possible to have something that is national, nationally known. Right, right, yeah, right. Whether right. it's drama, whether it's a person, whether it's particular whatever thing that happened.、Mm-hmm. But these days, because it's so, everything is so segmented. Different demographics using different ways of consuming content, right? Your grandpa, pap, probably are still watching television. Your mother probably、yeah. are doing it differently. You are definitely getting it on social media mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because of how broken down it is. It's just impossible for anything、mm-hmm. to really say getting so big、yeah. and everyone knows that type of thing. It just doesn't、mm-hmm. happen anymore. Like even word of honor is popular. I don't see how you know it's gonna. Affect anything significantly, yeah. But you definitely see the trend coming, and because this year there are still quite, quite a few dramas that are boil up that are queued up、right. in China, and then probably leading into next year. So this year, next year, at least I think a dozen dramas, right? That I I've heard of that needs to come out this year and next year. So that's that's quite a lot. <laughs> Previously. Not like、yeah. I think it's everybody after 2019 after the Untamed. Everyone is like, "Wow, this is like a huge cake." Yeah, they want to get on the trend now. <laughs> yeah, get on it. So because of that, we have at least a dozen drama. Yeah. So、wow. World of Warner is the first one after Untamed success,、right. and it's the first one that came out during this period where everybody just rushed into、right. boy love、mm-hmm. and making dramas, and so. It's lucky. It's really lucky. This production is lucky.、Mm-hmm. Like the timing of it is perfect, mysterically、mm-hmm. perfect.、Mm-hmm. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't see it happening for other productions because、mm-hmm. this type of thing probably happens only once a couple of years in yeah, terms、right. of everything like working for it. So for the for the later comers this year and next, I can't promise like which one is gonna do as well or even better. It's just so. Yeah, they probably need to like have better quality to kind of stand out、mm-hmm. from the other ones to succeed. I know, like in if you take like the Philippines last year started making BLs as well, and the first one to come out was Game Boys, and I think a lot of the success of Game Boys was like the timing of it.、Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it's also a great show. It is. Fantastic! Like,、yeah. if there was any show that could be like the first one to be out there, it was that one was great. But I think like it was like a small company that got it out there. They had no promotion, barely or anything like that, and it's just usually it's these ones get it big, right?、Mm-hmm. Yeah, the underdogs always come back up. It's it's that that like the universe has a script for this type of things. It、right. enjoys. Yeah,、It's、kind of unexpected things happen,、mm. and for word of of honor, nobody nobody saw it coming, and everybody like like even like the the drama itself, the platform itself,、mm. the crew itself, the actors them, like nobody really see it getting anywhere big. Yeah, they're so pathetically poor that I think <laughs> current rumor about it, it its budget was a between fifty million and seventy million RMB. So、okay. it sits between that two number. What exact number? Not sure. And、mm-hmm. mostly coming from just one advertiser, the、oh. the nut company that that just 
the golden luck, right? They <laughs> so like didn't expect they're gonna get so big, so popular. And, yeah, yeah. And the funny thing is because after the drama aired, and the company, the not company, is like um, they are really good at promoting shows.、Mm-hmm. They realize the drama is popular, so all their social media accounts start to go everywhere. And they they act like a real person. It's like they、mm-hmm. leave comments under really popular edits. They go <laughs> to really popular content creators' video, and then they like they interact and they、Ooh. do funny things too. So they're、Sticky. like really good. Yeah, they didn't see it definitely, but they're、yeah. like we're cashing on this like crazy. <laughs> That is so smart. Like. No joke, they are really like because I know a lot of com- as a company owner myself, I I feel really hesitant about being funny <laughs> because、right. you know it can backfire、oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. immensely. It also, also depends on what kind of branding, right? Like what yeah, brand, like, yeah, right. Your image. You cannot have、yeah. Chanel, right? For example, doing that that would be ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. you're you're like a walnut, and I don't know, like whatever not. Mm. And, and food company, you know, it can it actually can, get can work quite cute. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can. And, and they're so good at it. Like,、uh-huh. I I've had friends like receiving comments from them, their official、mm-hmm. accounts, and just acting so so like a person,、mm-hmm. being really like internet savvy and cute. So that's so cute. Oh, I love stuff like that. I could never do it for my own company, but I love seeing stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> So one thing I'm really curious about because they dub everything in Chinese dramas, right? Not all, but a large proportion. Yeah. Why? <laughs> for contemporary dramas, less likely. For period dramas, more likely.、Mm. There are a lot of reasons. I have a video on my channel that actually explains it very,、okay. very in a lot of detail.、Mm. There are practical reasons. Sometimes when you're filming, you just cannot have clean sound. Yeah, right. Because you know the period dramas are all filmed mostly in Hengdian or in Xiangyang, a couple of like a built-up ancient looking city that's designed for period drama, drama filming. filming、right? And、mm-hmm. they're also theme parks, pretty much. So they're tourist heavy all the time.、Mm. So if you lock down your set, a building to film certain things, everybody around、mm. it, outside it, are just tourists. So they're、yeah. shouting, right? They're、mm. doing whatever. And then、yeah. you are also building sets and dismantling them all the time. So you could be filming in room A, and the next door room B is actually being built right now.、Mm-hmm. And so the hammer <laughs> and the construction is、oh, ongoing.、Wow. You can't use the sound then. So、mm-hmm. if the production really are very sort of, <laughs> the, first they have a lot of money. They don't worry about that. Then the,、mm-hmm. the actors are all very very adamant about that. Then they go ADR themselves afterwards、mm-hmm. once the. Rough comes out, they go and dub their own voice. Yeah. But then, because usually at the end of the production, money runs out,、mm-hmm. so you have less and less money left.、Mm-hmm. And if you hire back the original actors to dub themselves, it usually costs more money. Right. Oh, right. No, everything, and then their hours are more expensive, and they're not、mm-hmm. expert dubbing because dubbing is、yeah. is a profession. It's an, it's if you've art, never、right. done it, you're slow at getting it'll take it time. Properly done. So、yep. if a professional can do it in one day, you have to do it in three days. Then that's、right. three days of renting a studio. So、mm-hmm. because of money, ended up being so you you see first this period drama mostly gets stopped is because first the sound recorded on set are most likely unusable, and then once you get to post production, if you don't have money, you go for dubbing actors. For contemporary、yeah. dramas, it's more likely to actually get clean sound. Because、mm-hmm. you're filming, for example, in an office, right, at home, right? It's an actual real environment that can be controlled, not like a tourist、right. spot. So,、mm-hmm. for those dramas, it's more likely you can hear the real voice from the actors. Right. That's really interesting. Yeah, I never knew like the reasoning behind it.、Mm-hmm. That's really interesting. And also, it has something to do with a lot of the younger actors, and for the what we call like the traffic. Or the idol, and the the type of dramas that's made for the young demographics, web、mm-hmm. drama consumers. Many of those young actors do really lack at line delivery. Yeah,、mm-hmm. and Mandarin is really peculiar, and people's expectation of drama speaking has been built up over the years. Yeah, right. 
because I understand like how it works like with English and like American UK television series. You see like people more act more like normal people talking,、mm-hmm. but Mandarin is very specific. Mandarin is like not even received pronunciation English equivalent. It's literally a designed standard pronunciation that's based on a regional. Accent in China, but、mm-hmm. it's only for that tiny place. Everybody speaks like that, and for the vast majority of Chinese people, local dialect is very different from Mandarin. Yeah, right. right. That makes sense. Years of television, film, and people have already built up this expectation of drama speaking needs to be what particular type of speaking.、Right. If you cannot hit that standard pronunciation. It drives people like it literally takes you out of the story, right. especially、yeah. period drama. If you're not speaking standard Mandarin, if you have a lo- very strong local dialect, it's just so taking you out of the illusion.、Right. So if the actors cannot have perfect accent and perfect Mandarin delivery, and sometimes also they lack training, so they the delivery has like like the rhythm where you put the emphasis on all that、mm-hmm. doesn't quite work.、Mm-hmm. For dramatic performance, might as well just dub it with a proper voice actor. Yeah, I can relate a little bit to that because in Norway, before like now it's not as bad, but before usually in TV shows and stuff you had to speak、um, the main dialect,、mm-hmm. Norwegian dialect, because the country is so long and far spread apart. So there's so many dialects with. If you go, if you have someone from up north, and you have someone like me from the south, like we usually we can't understand each other,、right. even、wow. though we're both talking Norwegian, right? Because、yeah. our dialects are、Same、so heavy. Same thing in China, definitely.、Mm-hmm. So I get that. I, I they usually used like heavy dialects in TV shows when I was younger to create comedy instead、mm-hmm. of like some serious dramas because people couldn't take it serious and they couldn't. If they couldn't understand what other person was saying because the dialect was so heavy, like、right. as、yeah. you said, it takes you out of the whole fantasy of the show. Right.、Mm. Have you guys all watched? Have you all watched Word of Honor? Yes, I have. I haven't finished it yet, but I'm watching. So, so there's a character. Do you remember the the guy who's supposed to、like, be eating dead bodies? Ghost. Yeah. yeah. That guy, right? He speaks a very strong dialect. I don't、mm. know if you can tell. Mm-hmm. Very different from everybody else, and it's、mm-hmm. like the Dongbei, the northeastern、yeah. dialect that's well known within China because of the comedy sort of that comes from it. Oh, and he is like when he speaks, right? A lot of people would say, "Wow, wow, we're we're almost getting out of the drama now because he's <laughs> so Dongbei." And because Dongbei is well known for a lot of very famous comedian、mm-hmm. and a particular type of comedy performance, so it immediately takes you out of the story. Oh、uh, yeah, yeah. I can understand that. <laughs> so, like Chinese dramas are all really long, and you you said earlier that they are trying to cut it down.、Mm-hmm. So they started making them long to earn money. Is、mm-hmm. that it? Yeah,、mm-hmm. yeah, and that's it. Because dramas are sold per episode. That's how it gets、mm-hmm. sold. So it、okay. gets made, and then you sell it. Previously, it was to sell a television. Now、mm. it's selling it to platforms, and sometimes platforms also are a part of the production, so they invest、oh, money、yeah. into it too.、Mm-hmm. So, and for copyright, right? Like it's sold by episodes per episode. How much money you have to give me, right, for you to、mm-hmm. air this drama?、Right. And it's just been done like that for. It's just always been done like that. So, like, <laughs> obviously, you can see why we have to make more episodes, right? You're right. It, Yeah, but <laughs> it's just very, really unhealthy when you think about it. So I wish this could get changed. Yeah, it's insane to actually expect people to watch an episode a day of a drama. Yeah, <laughs> this is definitely culturally different because for China, it has always been like this for decades.、Yeah. It's like television, usually up like satellite television. They used to be airing one or two episodes per night for drama. So forty episodes.、Wow. If it's two, then it runs about twenty days,、mm-hmm. and it finishes. And it has always been like this. So Chinese audiences、right. are basically we are taught to watch it that way.、Mm. So for like the U.S. seasonal drama, 
per episode, you know, per week. This is just like to Chinese people are just like unacceptable. Right. <laughs> <laughs> if you watch this US or UK or whatever drama, you would have to do with it, right? Right. But but the thing is, if it's a Chinese drama, so for Chinese audience, for me, for example, I'm a Chinese audience. If、mm-hmm. I watch a foreign drama, I know it's a U.S. seasonal drama. I accept、mm-hmm. it's one episode per week. It's fine,、right. you know.、Mm-hmm. Like when I was like watching Game of Thrones or whatever, or、right. all the type of like I had a long history of watching U.S. dramas.、Mm-hmm. But <laughs> but if it's a Chinese made drama, it comes from China, and you expect me to watch one episode a week, I, I'm gonna go away too. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so Chinese dramas kind of shot themselves in the foot with <laughs> the, the scheduling. It's also to a system actually, because dramas cannot air as they write as they air. Right. It cannot because Korean dramas are mostly like that. Yeah.、Mm-hmm. You make a couple of episodes, you air, and then you and see you how the response is, and you、mm-hmm. go and make the future episodes, right? Right. Because you don't have to go through that censoring. Process, but、mm-hmm. in China, is you have to have the whole thing done in the camera, edited, and you send it to censorship. And if they say it's passed, then it's locked down. You can't change anything now,、right. and you have to air it. So you have to finish the entire thing.、Mm-hmm. Then, because of that, you have the whole drama there. So you air it one episode per day or two episode per day. Right. It makes sense, but yeah, I I can understand why a lot of like Western audience might have difficulties getting through the shows.、Yeah. I <laughs> <laughs> I know I know a lot of people who loved the Untamed, but they took forever to get through every episode, just <laughs> because it, it it kind of gets overwhelming at one point. It is <laughs> like fifty standard for period dramas, especially for、mm. period dramas. It has to be long because if、mm-hmm. it's short, it will lose money because you sell、right. it for episodes. And usually, p- period dramas have higher budget because right, of cost sets、mm. everything. So, for a forty episode contemporary drama budget, you cannot make a forty episode period drama. No way.、Right. So because of that, period drama cannot be too short. Otherwise,、right. there's just no way that they can make money on it. Which is why, like, Word of Honor is just like with the money they managed to do 36 episodes. It's already a miracle.、Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think the Untamed is at least more than twice the budget of、mm-hmm. Word of Honor, and it's like an earlier production. Right? It was right. filmed in 18. This one is filmed last year. Yeah. And so when you think about inflation, and then. I think the one that people are waiting for it to come out may not come out, which is the immortality. Yeah,、Ooh. we heard about that. That one's、yeah. budget is at least five times as Word of Honor. Right. Yeah, because、mm. we heard that it wasn't in ten cents announcement for the the shows this year, but it was supposed to be. But no one knows what is happening. Nobody knows. So there's this Chinese drama, and you never know. Like dramas can literally drop,、mm-hmm. like on、right. the day. Wow, and, and they don't tell you when it's gonna air. It just literally shows、out. up and say we're we're on.、Mm-hmm. And if they tell you they're gonna air, unless it airs, even <laughs> if it's fifteen minutes before that time, it could still disappear. Wow, <laughs> right? This happened la- last year, no, twenty twenty nineteen for the um tribes and empires um the not not tribes and empires、uh, the Jiu Jiu Piao Miao Eagle Flag. I don't know if、okay. you know that drama. No, I haven't. Yeah, it was set to go on at a certain time at a day, and literally fifteen minutes before it aired, it got pulled down and waited for another month to air. Wow. Yeah. So, this can happen, which is why no rumor is really reliable anyway.、Mm-hmm. So this drama could show up tomorrow. It may not show up until autumn or next year. Nobody knows. Right.、Hmm. That is insane. <laughs> Wow, it's like living in like the unknown. <laughs> I'm、yeah. so used to like a structured daily life with everything. Like, if something is announced here, it's coming. They're they're not pulling it, whatever it is. It's just yeah,、mm-hmm. unfortunate. So therefore, a lot of people ask me like, why don't you look, make those like. Dramas to look forward to videos anymore. I'm、mm, like, I can't. You never know. Yeah, right. Because,、mm. <laughs> because, like, the drama may never show up. <laughs> <laughs> That's insane. It would be so interesting to have like inside knowledge of what actually happens to these shows. <laughs> yeah, it would be. It would be. Um, I think 
like for word of honor, what, what a little bit inside news I've heard is they opened up the VVIP mm -hmm. halfway through. So after episode 18, right, starting from 19 in China, you could have watched a couple of more episodes on the, right. the day, mm -hmm. like ahead of other people. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people complained about it because it was getting so popular. So every day, one episode, it's just the right amount that gets everybody going and digging right. mm -hmm. and then going with a huge, like a <laughs> magnifying glass and <laughs> figuring out what's going on in every episode. Once you have that opened up, it immediately kills the discussion. Mm. It the heat, right? Of yeah, the because you know right. what's happening in the future. And I've heard from, from a couple of people in there, which is they did it intentionally. Oh. Because okay. it was getting too popular. Oh, oh, interesting. And if it gets too popular, you may attract people who are going to... Mm, yeah, you, you know what I mean, it. right? Yeah. And also, because, because internet is getting so crazy at over-interpreting stuff and making vi like content creators making videos, people dub the real line with voice actors so they they find voice actors that sounds like the voice actors of the drama uh -huh. and then they dub the actual lines back oh <laughs> it lips, right so all right, these famous yeah. moments that are we can tell that get got dubbed got yeah. figured out by lip reading people wow. and then back that with is really, next level. really good voice actors because a couple of them i actually know i was like uh -huh. oh god you went ahead doing that okay <laughs> <laughs> and I know, I know that the girl who did that video, and I know the voice actor she picked because we've been yeah. like, I know her like for a long time, mm -hmm. and I was so like, holy, <laughs> was like, wow. this is a bad idea. <laughs> she has to put the like a big notice on that video. Is this is not the original drama? This is done right. by us. Don't use right. it for other purpose. Don't put it in your edit. Yeah. So this type of stuff is getting crazy. Yeah. On the internet, I think. The project team that's dealing with this drama in Yoku themselves, mm -hmm. they got really scared. <laughs> <They're> like, <laughs> right. We have to control yeah. the popularity because it may just like, and at that point it was like halfway. They were like, mm -hmm. we may not even be able to air the whole thing. Right. Mm -hmm. right. So we have well, to <laughs> do something, right? We have to do something to put the fire. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Obviously they also get a little bit extra money from it but yeah. honestly honestly the money that they would earn from that is is not really consequential right to say if they actually get more popular they get more money because the big money comes from advertisers mm -hmm. at the beginning of the drama it has no advertising attached to it mm -hmm. after it got popular in the teen number episodes the, the two male leads got pulled back and literally dressed up as their characters again and filmed so many ads <laughs> and jammed that into your cool so after watching right. like yeah the first week there was no ads <laughs> and the second week they all got caught back where there's like so many like skincare food yeah, milk, yeah, yeah. whatever <laughs> and it's so funny they, they, it they went back to the sets they dressed up again and they filmed those because the drama was popular and wow. those advertising money just like is so much more than Are you like right? like three yuan for an episode that you can collect from from viewers uh -huh. but like they they had to think like if the drama actually doesn't finish airing then they would also lose ad money so yeah right <laughs> putting everything into consideration they started the vvip thing yeah does like the international success of the shows does that like have any impact on the shows in china do you like see a bleed over there it wouldn't really affect what goes on in China, but it will mm -hmm. earn them extra money for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So that's definitely extra money. They sell it to more platforms. They sell the copyrights. And right. Mm -hmm. right, right, right. I mean, YouTube also has ad income, I think. So all that. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Yeah. And then, and Yoku did something funny. They, they put extra scenes for the YouTube version. Oh, they did? They did. Like they added extra shot that did not exist in any version so the chinese version Ooh. doesn't have it the amazon version doesn't have it the vicky wow. version doesn't have it only the youtube version has it like a couple really? of extra shot in i think it was episode 20 or 21 20 mm -hmm. when they're in the cave when zhou zishu hugs wen keqin mm -hmm. in the chinese version there's no hugging back oh huh. but in the youtube version there's a shot of his hand going back onto zhou zishu's hand and Back right. and grabbing mm -hmm. 
So they added extra shot into the YouTube version. Wow. Yeah. And it's only in YouTube version, not anywhere else. <laughs> Everybody, That's... we have done the work. <laughs> okay, so everyone should just watch the YouTube version. <laughs> Don't go to Mickey. Don't do it. It was actually even more when they filmed it after grabbing the back.、Mm-hmm. They didn't literally like separate immediately. They actually have、oh. a forehead touching, so they、oh. their forehead is together for like a well ten second. Uh-huh. Before they part, and they cut out the forehead part for all versions. But then there are、mm-hmm. people on set who filmed it, so it's now、oh, also on the floating around. Right. The <laughs> so, so, so the rumor is true. It's like the original script has a lot of stuff that when they filmed it, they cut it out because it's too.、Mm-hmm. It's definitely not going to go through、yeah. censorship. And then when after they filmed it, they cut it on further in post production. Yeah. To make it even less, and with dubbing, so basically the text version would be the craziest version that nobody can see. The version that they filmed on set、uh, with all the leaks, <laughs> you can see. <laughs> you kind of get the、uh, how far they went for a lot of things, and then now the final version you see is the the third filtered version. Right.、Wow. <laughs> that just gives、insane. you an idea of how much it goes through to get to air. I can't imagine the like bureaucracy and nightmare it has to be to like make these shows going through so many hoops. Well, the drama is really great. Like, if someone hasn't watched Word of Honor, they should, they should. because and they shouldn't be like afraid because of the length of it. Just watch it's it. Not it's not long. It's only for thirteen six. <laughs> it's only thirteen six. Really short. For period drama in China, and then actually, if you get to if you've watched the whole thing, you you probably would agree with me. They need four more episodes. If、right. it go, it goes to forty, it will be a better story. There are so much stuff that's washed in the end、right. that things don't even connect well. There's a、mm. lot of emotional holes that it didn't fill. Like you feel there must be something that happened between this and that,、mm. but、mm. it's not there. So for this particular story, for it to sort of fully and completely right wraps up everything, it probably will be a better drama when it's forty episodes. Yeah, I did see some people on Twitter making those. Yeah, it's very obvious that、mm. they they cut down so much that it no longer connects at certain points. Right, Alexa, Coco, do you guys have any other questions? I'm all out. <laughs> No, nothing for me. This was really interesting. I honestly like. I'm not. I haven't. Like I said, I've dabbled in some C dramas here and there, but I did not know much about well, how much goes into it, and you know the culture, the fan culture, and everything like that. So I honestly like learned a lot this episode. It's really interesting.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, thank you so much for coming here and explaining all of this to、yeah. us. <laughs> you're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah, there's so much, so much to talk about.、Mm-hmm. Fan culture. You don't want to get into it. <laughs> <laughs> like the entire, the entire Asian sort of the the Eastern Asian, right? The Jap, the from Japan to South Korea、mm-hmm. to China, all that fandom stuff is just、oh, yeah, <laughs> it's a headache. It's a huge cesspool and a headache and a big,、yeah. big nasty. Light on,、yeah. <laughs> on culture, and I'm like, oh, you don't. Better you stay away from stay it. Away. It's good that you don't know anything about it. Keep it that way. <laughs> don't, don't try to get yourself educated. It's it's just not worth it. Yeah, right. <laughs> Well, that is everything we have time for today. For everyone listening, if you want to support this podcast and what we do, our Patreon links is in the description. We also have some great news. We're gonna be guests at this year's FujiCon, where we will have a panel talking about morality in the BL industry.、Yay. So sign up for that. It's completely free and all online. So we hope to see you there. And thank you again for joining us, Avenue X. It's my pleasure. Yes, thank, thank you so much. This was really fun. And everyone should just go and check out her channel. You won't regret it. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye.